So much like buses, this is the second MD6 to be in front of me in a couple of months. And they've always been a point of interest for me. Not a lot of information exists on the MD series of AYAs, in English at least. But every time I see an MD6, I fall in love. So I believe it was the first of the AYA series of guns to be on a boss style action. I believe, I don't know, seven or eight years ago they re-released something similar with the dropout trigger. So that being the case, unlike some of their over and other over that have a locking lug underneath that can create an incredibly deep action, these have a boss locking system, meaning they lock on these two lumps at the bottom, the hook into the back of the action. That gives you a much shallower profile than most other AYAs on the market, and to be honest, to my taste, or certainly to English tastes, it looks a lot sweeter. I mean, I actually have, coincidentally, a coral behind me, and if you look at the lines and depth of it, it's a very different looking thing. And I wouldn't say inherently unpleasant, but this just looks a little bit more familiar. The fact it's based on a boss obviously turns all of us on, much like other fake bosses. So the MD series was released in the 80s. I believe, although I can't confirm this because there's so little information out there, that these guys bought up the assets of Aaron Berry in the 80s, and then shortly after they came up with this, Aaron Berry were making a boss action gun anyway that was relatively good quality, but you know, built to a price. What AYA did was build it to an AYA standard, which was superior. They made the MD2, which was a plain gun, the MD6, which is a Rose and Scroll engraved gun, although I've seen two or three different patterns on these, and the MD6S, a side plated version, S for side plates. This particular one is a 1997 gun, and I believe they stopped making them in the mid noughties 2007, in that sort of ballpark. I could be wrong. I think a lot of the issue with them is that they were going directly price point with Parazzi. Parazzi being much better known for trap and clay guns than AYA was at the time, or still is today. AYA are makers of fine game guns, generally speaking, and most people know them for their side by sides, their over and unders never having been widely popular. On this one, you get a pretty plain piece of wood. Most of the MD series I've seen don't go above you know, a common grade three. They're built for strength, like most things AYA. They're not over the top, they are build guns that are strong, pretty, but strong. Most of them had a fairly decent sporting stock, high enough to shoot clays with, and that was obviously the point in this gun. It was a clay gun. And actually, if you look at it, it's interesting that it is very reminiscent of a Parazzi or a lot of the other sporters of the era. And it's good, it's unequivocally well made. You have a ventilated recoil pad, a fairly long and open pistol grip, although again, at the time, this was pretty standard of sporting guns, but we weren't sort of in the era that we are now, huge palm swells and big deep grips. On the top, you have a selector, S for safe with an over and under. I always like it when they actually put an O and a U on any gun because it saves you guessing, not that it particularly matters anyway. The top lever is really quite sleek, long and very quaint, unfortunately, the Checking on them is a, is a little bit lower standard than all the other engraving on this gun, but that's by the by. Whereas the extra length, actually very pleasant to open and close. Again, that boss locking system does lend itself to that final light, sort of tight click as it all pulls into place. I like the deep carving up into the balls around the action there. And I kind of like the soft look. You know, I've, I'm a big Parazzi fan as well. I like all guns. I think we can, you're probably aware of that by now, but I like, the sort of the smooth hand finished feel to these. They are hand cut, hand carved actions. Unlike up their competitors who are just essentially straight machining stuff, these guys are coming in and using their knowledge and their skill set from their side by side making and hand carving out these actions, which is, it's nice. I think it's nice. You know, it doesn't give that same clean, harsh lines, but what it does give you is a, a much more bespoke feel, however that, however silly it's as well, a much more handmade feel. On the bottom, it's printed 
MD6 in the gape, then you say you've got rows and scroll covering the entire action. It's nice, it's a full coverage, it's not too in your face, but it is very pleasant. The forend is a semi beaver tail with a latch in there like that to pull that off. Very pleasant. I like the fact they've engraved the screws in the forend. It's a nice touch. Regarding the barrel specs, there are a lot of different barrel specs available. This particular one has a no mid ribs, just a joining rib at the end. Little plastic bead sight on its 10 to 8 millimeter tapered, filed, ventilated rib. I have a real soft spot for these. And there's, there's a numerous reasons. Firstly, it's different. If I see another MX-8 and they're beautiful and amazing guns, don't be wrong. I just, it's a bit yawny, isn't it? They're a bit boring. How many people have ever seen an MD6, let alone owned or shot one? Reliability wise, it's an AYA, you know, they are bomb proof, absolutely bomb proof. You know, this one's in the Holtz December 2021 sale, it's lot 1624, there was one in the last sale, and that one, that one to be fair, had a 16 and a half inch stock, it was absolutely lovely, and a little bit nicer engraving, in fact it was a little bit better than this one all round. That went for about, I think 1700-ish, give or take. Uh, this one's estimate 8 to 12, it'll probably go for, I would have thought 14-ish. They are great value guns. They're different, they're reliable. There's nothing that I don't like actually about them. Again, the real problem with these and why they're not around today is because you can't go waltzing into Parazzi's market. It's a tough place to be. They've got a hugely loyal following all across Europe and the world. The gun didn't stick and that's a shame. But what we are left with is some beautiful examples lying around just like this and you two can own a piece of that little AYA history. It is one of the only AYA over and unders that I am... I've seen AYA over and unders that I'm fascinated by, but this is an AYA over and under that I would love to own. They are, to all intents and purposes, very Parazzi-like in the way they handle, the way they move, the way they're specced. And that's no bad thing. Just nice to be different. And that is all the information I have on the MD series of AYA. It is not a lot, I'm afraid. I'd love if you know more, chuck it in the comment section below and we can all educate each other. Guys, take care. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye and we'll see you next time.